ball bearing bite recorder is a device for making very accurate recordings of jaw relationships. The upper base plate has a flat metal striking plate in the palate. The lower base plate carries the adjustable ball bearing marker. The ball bearing bite recorder records only jaw relationships. When the dentist requests a bite recorder, you will also prepare an aesthetic control base for use in recording aesthetic measurements. To prepare the ball bearing bite recorder, use the materials in this kit. Prepare base plates for the upper and lower casts as you would for the aesthetic control base and the lower bite block. Thoroughly soften half a sheet of setup wax. Make a soft ball about the size of a walnut. Place the ball of wax in the palate of the upper base and flame the surface with a torch. Place the striking plate on the soft wax. The plate should be just lingual to the crest of the anterior ridge. If it extends too far forward or backward in the arch, center it. Press the striking plate into the soft wax until it is level with the crest of the ridge. Viewed from the front, the plate should be level in the vault. Viewed from the buckle, the plate should have a slight tilt upward in the back. Occasionally, bulbous tuberosities will force you to place the striking plate slightly forward in relationship to the base in order to maintain the upward slant at the back. Trim excess wax and loot the edge of the striking plate to the wax. Flame the wax lightly to produce a smooth surface. Cut V-shaped registration grooves in the wax on each side of the plate to create reference features in the plaster. Turn to the lower cast. Outline the retromolar pads. Place a dot in the center of each pad. Draw a horizontal line on the cast at the bottom of each retromolar pad. These lines must be visible with the lower base on the cast. Lay a ruler between the dots on the retromolar pad. With a pencil, mark a line on the floor of the lower cast between the two dots. Mark an X on the center line of the floor of the cast, halfway between the line you just drew and the anterior crest of the ridge. Remove the pin assembly from the blue bar. Place a roll of soft stick compound on the ridge from about the cuspid region to the second molar region. If necessary, place another roll on top of that so the top of the roll is higher than the bottom of the retromolar pad. Do the same on the other side.
Put the blue bar on the compound with the slot in the bar centered on the X on the floor of the cast. Press the bar down into the compound until the top surface of the bar is level with the bottoms of the retromolar pads. Looking from the buckle, adjust the bar so it is generally parallel with the crest of the ridge. It should tilt upward and back. Looking from the anterior, make sure the bar is level. With a hot wax knife, cut off excess compound around the bar on the labial. Cut at an angle sloping away from the bar on all sides. Seal the bar to the compound thoroughly on the labial. Make sure there are no undercuts under the bar. Remove the base from the cast. Trim away excess compound and seal the bar on the lingual. Make sure there is enough room between the bar and the cast for the rest of the assembly, sleeve, hex nut, and pin. Grind the cast if necessary. Clean excess compound off the top surface of the bar. Flame the compound lightly to produce a smooth surface. Place the blue sleeve in the slot with the flat disc on top. Turn the bar over and screw the red hex nut onto the sleeve. Looking straight down, Position the hole in the sleeve two millimeters anterior to the X marked on the cast and secure it with the hex nut. Screw the ball bearing end of the large pin into the sleeve from the bottom and run it up and down to be sure it moves freely. The pin should extend half of its length above the blue bar. The ball bearing bite recorder is now ready for the dentist. When you send the bite recorder to the dentist, be sure you also send the other parts of the bite recorder kit and the aesthetic control base for aesthetic recordings.